Dragon Ball Z has created some of the coolest transformations to date, and there is one transformation that we have not seen yet in animation. That form is Ultra Ego. What's good? My name is Bugsy, and today I've decided to tackle the complexity of Ultra Ego. Ultra Ego is a very interesting form based on how the form was achieved, the pros and cons, and the usability in battle. I'm going to go back all the way to the Saiyan Saga and go through the anime and manga to see if this form has been foreshadowed. There will be timestamps, so you can skip through the video. However, if you do, you will be cursed, and when you are at the weakest in your life, you will suffer a fate worse than Nobura. Itadori, Before we dive into the analysis, I want to say that no, I do not think that this form was created just because Goku earned Ultra Instinct. First of all, I am Vegeta. Second of all, you're not Vegeta. Third of all, you want to be Vegeta, but you can't be Vegeta because I am Vegeta. We are introduced to Vegeta during the Saiyan invasion of Earth, a challengely heightened, short tempered, and callous alien that does not have any kindness. A character who believes that strength is the only thing that matters in the world, everything else is just a delusion for the weak. His demeanor is what separated himself from the other Saiyans. In Vegeta's fighting style, we see how barbaric he is and how there is no such thing as a dirty fight. For those who get the reference, shout out to you. Vegeta throws Nappa in the air and kills him because he got his back broken. Pause. Vegeta's fighting style has always been based on personal strength and ego over techniques and help of friends. Vegeta has to fight Goku, Gohan, and Krillin, and through his own strength, he was going to find a way to survive, most importantly, win. Even in the face of certain death, he was not going to retreat until he was unable to move. The Saiyan Saga showed that Vegeta was the complete opposite of Goku, which makes sense given the difference of how they were raised. To conclude, the Saiyan arc and how it foreshadowed Ultra Ego is that Vegeta believed in his own strength and ego would lead him to victory. The Saiyan Saga is what I believe amplified the knowledge we already knew about Vegeta regarding personality but also fighting style. During the arc, we see the savagery of his fighting style and his personality, killing the Namekians until they gave him the information he desired, even the ones who begged for mercy. Vegeta always believed that the weak did not deserve to live and the strong are the only ones worthy of living. Therefore, killing the Namekians was on par with his character. Even fighting the Ginyu Force, he realized that some of them are weaker than him, which fuels his ego. Seeing members of the Ginyu Force beg for their life and exchanging information hoping to live is what Vegeta wants. Godo, Dodoria, and Zarbon all faced a gruesome death from Vegeta, which only fueled his ego even more. Raccoon humbled Vegeta and made him realize he was indeed not close to becoming the Super Saiyan, which is the second time we have seen Vegeta's ego get damaged. The first time being on Earth where Goku defeats him and lets Vegeta live. Having his ego hurt caused Vegeta to crash out and kill the remaining Ginyu Force members that Goku left disabled. Due to the Sensu Beans, Vegeta believes he is able to face off against Frieza and win. Again, his ego is out of control and one of the main reasons why he continues to lose against enemies that are stronger than him or equal in strength. The Frieza vs Vegeta fight was extremely hard to watch because we see the proud prince slowly realize that he is nowhere near Frieza's strength, but more importantly, a Super Saiyan. If it is not evident enough, much of Vegeta's strength comes from his ego. When Vegeta's ego is at max capacity, the only way it goes down is him being defeated in combat. Well, we all know what happens to the GOAT during the arc, and let's fast forward to when Vegeta turns into a Super Saiyan. Then something just snapped! Something inside of me! I didn't care anymore! I didn't care about being better than Cap- Vegeta turning into a Super Saiyan was great and bad at the same time. It being great because we hear one of the greatest speeches in anime- Then something just snapped! Something inside of me! No! No more! That's it! I don't care! I didn't care anymore! I didn't care about being better than Kakarot! I didn't care about being a Super Saiyan! I didn't care if I lived! I didn't care about anything! And then, it happened. Super Saiyan elevated his ego and made him believe he was the strongest in the universe. His hatred of Goku and how he was much stronger than him drove him mad. And why did it drive him mad? Goku, or Kakarot, a low class warrior, was able to achieve something that Vegeta couldn't. But more importantly, he did it first. Vegeta sees Goku as an idiot and that only insults his ego more and more. Which is why throughout the anime, he does not respect Goku until certain moments. <coughs> <coughs> the Boo Saga. Now, the only bad thing regarding Vegeta achieving Super Saiyan was that he truly believed he was indestructible until he fought Android 18 and then again humbled by Perfect Cell. Vegeta, when he is a Super Saiyan and when he knows his opponent is weaker than him, will allow him to get some free punches in. He does this against Android 19 and we hear him say, So I guess it's true after all. Androids do experience 
that is still one of the best moments in the android saga once vegeta knows for sure that android 19 is weaker and calls a machine to feel fear he knew he had won his ego is fulfilled and he is ready to strike fear into everyone around him fast forward to vegeta versus imperfect cell he was intrigued by the idea of cell getting stronger what did that mean it meant that it allowed cell to become perfect and he defeated him well the ego causes a monster to be created and our proud saiyan prince is defeated once again and does not want to fight ever again. Vegeta throughout this arc is not the same warrior we had once seen due to Cell destroying his ego and Gohan achieving Super Saiyan 2 which even he nor Goku could achieve. At this point in the series Vegeta's ego grows and grows which results in his strength getting stronger. Oh my god Bugsy is that what this entire video is about Vegeta's ego? Well no because we see Vegeta realize the error of his ways during the Buu saga. Let me explain. One thing I find interesting in the manga is how Vegeta has evil dripping from his heart. This is shown in chapter 262, page 141, where Babidi says, You're right, this one not like the others. His heart is dripping with evil. He did not come here to do any good. At this point, this is the prelude to Vegeta transforming into Majin. Babidi brings out Vegeta's latent power, which is what allows him to achieve Super Saiyan 2, a cop-out, but it was necessary for Goku to take him seriously in a duel. The difference in the anime and manga is that in the anime, Vegeta sounds off about how Frieza turned him into this evil person, his race dwindling to a handful, how Kakarot always being stronger than him, saving him, and insulting his honor. In the manga, however, Vegeta makes it more about how Goku surpassed him in strength, which again hurt his ego. In the manga, it says, He surpassed me. He's saying just like me, but he far outstripped me. Me, the Saiyan Prince, the strongest of them all. Once, he even saved my life. I can't stand it. I can't. Later on in the chapter, Vegeta and Goku are transported. We get the infamous line. In the anime, it is, You may have invaded my mind and my body. But there's one thing a Saiyan always keeps, his strength! In the manga, however, he says, I will never be your servant. You may take over my mind and my soul, but never my pride. This chapter is what made Vegeta my favorite character, and yes, this all plays a role to how it leads to Ultra Ego. On page 190, Vegeta explains how he wanted to return the ruthless and cold-hearted warrior he used to be and how he hated how Goku influenced him. It caused him to raise a family, enjoy the earth, and even made him softer and less aggressive. All of this conflict is what Vegeta was thinking about and living through for years, which he had to express. His expression was through a final duel with Kakarot, leading to see who was truly the strongest between the two. Of course, near the end of the Majin Vegeta arc, we see the proud prince drop his ego and all the evil that he had in his heart for the betterment of the earth and his family. And the final words he says, Trunks, Bulma, I do this for you. And yes, even for you, Kakarot. The man he hated the most is the one who influenced him the most. After his final explosion, we see a new Vegeta emerge once he was given a second chance of life to defeat Super Buu. Of course, when Kid Buu arrives, we see the proud prince let go of his ego and do what he must for the survival of Earth and those he loves. The speech he gives about how Goku influenced his life and how Goku's attitude and mentality towards life led him to the success he had was almost inspiring. Then he says, I see it now. I fought to push down others. You only fight to push yourself. Hang in there, Kakarot. You are number one. At this point, Vegeta has abandoned his own ways and was willing to sacrifice himself to allow Kakarot the time he needed to defeat Kid Buu. At this point, does everything that we see regarding Vegeta's character progression make sense for him to achieve Ultra Ego? Well, it is a yes and no. I will not waste any time on Dragon Ball Super because in my opinion, it does not truly give much reason or explanation to Ultra Ego until the Tournament of Power Art. Besides Goku and Vegeta achieving Super Saiyan God and Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan, or commonly known as Super Saiyan Blue, which introduces God Key, those two forms do not specifically contribute to Ultra Ego. We do see Goku achieve Ultra Instinct, which have been foreshadowed since Dragon Ball, but for Vegeta, we see him during the arc something different. Vegeta shows what people assumed were signs of Ultra Instinct when he was dodging Jiren's punches. However, that was just Vegeta's high battle IQ and his recognition of patterns. In the manga, 
We see Vegeta and Beerus training on Beerus' world, Chapter 69 and the Dragon Ball Super manga is the inception of Ultra Ego. Beerus asks Vegeta how many planets the Saiyans had destroyed, and Vegeta explains how it all led to the destruction of Planet Vegeta. Vegeta became confused based on the odd questions that Beerus asked him and he wants to know how it is prevalent to him learning a god of destruction's power. Beerus then slams Vegeta into the ground and explains that as long as he has doubts, he would never be able to harness the power of destruction. This leads to a fight and Beerus continues to have the upper hand, leading to him telling Vegeta, as long as you are trapped by the past, you would never manage to grow past this point. After that leading to him using destruction on Vegeta, everything comes full circle. Vegeta would have never been able to use destruction in the past because of how torn he is from everything that has happened. The fall of Planet Vegeta, his race obliterated, and even meeting Kakarot has Vegeta's mind troubled. Vegeta would have to completely destroy the current version of himself and create a new version only thinking about destruction. Which is ironic because during the Buu saga, Vegeta thought that returning to his previous self would grant him the power needed to defeat Goku, which in hindsight is very small thinking. If he completely reinvigorated himself, he could fully master destruction. This is exactly what I've been waiting for. This is exactly, I don't mean to sound like Cat Williams, but this is exactly what I've been waiting for. In chapter 74 of the Dragon Ball Super manga, we see Granola versus Vegeta. In this fight, I see Vegeta starting to go back to his previous self. He continues to let Granola know that he just acquired his strength and how it doesn't matter if he is the strongest. Vegeta says, strongest, second strongest, rankings are well and good, but they only reflect a moment in time. Once that moment has passed by, is nothing but history. I love this line because of how true it is. Nobody stays the strongest forever, and of course coming from the egotistical Vegeta is exactly the message he needs to get to the next form. Granola stabs Vegeta and is starting to look grim for the Saiyan Prince. But shit was I wrong. When my goat starts to laugh, you know the enemy has something to worry about. Vegeta goes on on how he has not felt this feeling in a long time. There's no planet to protect, no people to save, just me immersed in battle, my happy place. That is the goat. This that is my goat. The goat. The goat. And boom. Vegeta goes up in a purple flame. And what can I say? The goat shows up with no eyebrows and purple hair. We have now been introduced to Ultra Ego Vegeta. And the words of him, the power derived solely from instinct, is unbound. Vegeta and Granola get back to fighting. But what I notice is that he allows Granola to land blows on him. His reasoning being that the hotter my battle soul burns, the stronger I grow. Which in my mind translates to the more damage Vegeta takes, the stronger he becomes. However, what happens if Vegeta takes too much damage? Will he explode due to all the damage he's taken and it turns into an uncontrollable unbound energy or what? One detail that Goku realizes is that Vegeta's ego is allowing him to believe he is getting stronger when that isn't true. Goku says, is he for real? Where is the oomph Vegeta had earlier? He knows that Vegeta is in fact getting weaker the longer the battle continues, which is the opposite of what Vegeta believes. Just like clockwork, Vegeta realizes that he has taken too much damage and his vision has become blurry. This is interesting because I am sure that Beerus did not tell him the ins and out of destruction, but wanted Vegeta to figure it out on his own. Goku comes and saves him once again, but Vegeta does not appreciate it whatsoever. He goes back to the same old, there's no one I'd rather beat the hell out of than you Kakarot. And Goku's response being, come on man, you sure picked a moment for this old attitude which is why Ultra Ego is not working for Vegeta. Going back to his old self is not what will grant him control over the form. He has to completely recreate himself new. Vegeta tries to go back to Ultra Ego and well, it does not pan out well for him. His last words before he thought was his death is, Apologies Lord Beerus, I couldn't revert to the callous, unfeeling man I once was. The God of Destruction power was beyond the scope of a novice like me. The complexity of Ultra Ego is something that I would have never figured out unless I rewatched the anime and reread the Granola arc. The Granola arc is still one of my favorite arcs to read, and it sucks that people think it is one of the weaker arcs. I love seeing Vegeta struggle with this form so much because it requires him to recreate himself, which he has done before. Vegeta recreated himself when he sacrificed himself against Majin Buu. While it did not grant him any new form, his personality changed for the better. I cannot wait to see how Toriyotaro elevates Ultra Ego and help to see Vegeta master the form. But now I am curious on how Vegeta will recreate himself or how he will make Ultra Ego his own. Similar to how Goku made Ultra Instinct his own. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this extensive video on the complexities of Ultra Ego. Let's try to break 150 likes. If we can do that, I will make a video either on Ultra Instinct or even Super Saiyan 4. Let me know in the comments section down below which video you would like to see. And make sure to follow me on Twitter if you made it this far and join the Discord. I will be making a Discord server public to the people and if you want to go in there talk anime, whatever, slide through and I'll be happy to host you and we can talk about whatever. Anime, sports, music, it doesn't matter. Have a great day and thanks for watching the video. Peace.